An independent Russian journalist by the name of Tatiana Flegenhauer was the target of a vicious attack earlier. Unfortunately, someone had broken into the news organization that she works for. It's a radio station known as Echo and proceeded to stab her. In fact, she got stabbed in the throat. And luckily, she did survive that that vicious attack and she is still able to do her job. And so she did something incredible recently. She decided to go to one of Putin's press conferences with her wound showing and ask him an incredibly challenging question. Now, she's one of the few journalists in Russia who does speak truth to power. She is independent and she criticizes Putin regularly. And so there have been some um, there has been some speculation that the attack against her, which was done by a man by the name of Boris Gritz, uh, was actually, uh, you know, motivated by the Russian government. Now again, I don't have evidence or proof of that, but there has been a trend of independent journalists attacked by Putin in Russia. Many of them die mysteriously. And so it's it's understandable that people have come up with these theories. Now here is the update to her story. So a few weeks after she was released from intensive care at a Moscow hospital, she surprised Vladimir Putin and millions of Russians watching the annual presidential press conference with a brief but powerful speech about the Kremlin's selective application of justice. Now, she spoke to the Daily Beast about what she had said during the press conference, and here were her thoughts or her feelings right before. She said, at the moment, I was so nervous, I think I was close to having a stroke. As all these people around me who'd been applauding for Putin for hours started screaming to silence me. And so she says that most of the journalists in Russia applaud him, they celebrate him, they never ask him the challenging questions. And if anyone ever has the audacity to ask him the tough questions, those people will be attacked viciously. And so she was nervous from the beginning, but that didn't deter her, it didn't stop her from asking the question that she wanted to ask. You get stabbed in the throat and then you come back out the next press conference and and you and you ask a tough question again. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and she persisted. I mean, this is a total hero. Uh, I don't know where people get this kind of courage. So look, I, I know that the, the leading theory in Russia on this stabbing by the officials is that it was a madman who did it. I know, and our government in the past has also said, "Oh, yeah, it was a madman who killed Kennedy and etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Okay, oh no, no, yeah, it's uh, not the people in power, definitely not that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, but all those reporters who criticize Putin that get attacked, um, all wild coincidences, all by a different individual madman. Man, Putin keeps catching those lucky breaks, and so I'm actually amazed at. At, at the courage that they have to continue uh, doing things like this. And right. so, and most people haven't. And she says she's really saddened to see uh, people that she looked up to before who were real journalists, who are now just saying everything Putin does is great. And, you know, he, oh, we went to Syria and how cool was that and how badass was it? Right. And, you know, just praising Putin over and over again. In this four hour press conference, whatever he said, the rest of the press, not his loyalists, not people in his party, the press would applause, applaud wildly. And so it's a really important lesson there, guys. Mm-hmm. It's not that she wasn't nervous and that she wasn't scared. She was. And as all those people were trying to shout her down, she persisted anyway. That's what courage is. So, so for me, this story demonstrates what a real journalist is or who a real journalist is. And what I mean by that is even if you don't buy that she was attacked by the Kremlin, it's still a traumatic incident. It's something that I think would convince any normal human being to want to quit their job. You know, if you've been targeted in that way and you almost lost your life, you know, I to some extent, I almost don't begrudge the other journalists in Russia who are now towing the line for Putin because I would be terrified. I think most people would be terrified for their lives if you see this pattern of independent journalists who speak truth to power getting targeted, getting murdered. Most people would either quit or they would just do what Putin would want them to do. In this case, 
regardless of who you think um, is behind that attack, she was brave enough very close after this attack to go to this press conference and ask a tough question about a double standard in the justice system in Russia. And so what she pointed out was, hey, I'm noticing, Putin, that the people that you're supportive of, the people who are supportive of you will break the law and they get off easy. But then others who you know, will have some sort of minor offense get the book thrown at them pretty aggressively. Now I'm paraphrasing what her question was. But Putin did not like that question. In fact, let's go to graphic 51. According to the Daily Beast, journalists sitting in the first row noticed that the president's face turned red. And he responded back by saying, I disagree that there are two parallel realities. The law has not been broken. It's just, it's amazing that she had the guts to ask that question. Also, she says, what really makes me sick is to see how people we consider to be professional journalists so recently have stopped being professional and joined the state propaganda. Also, another independent journalist spoke about these attacks and said, in Russia, even a reporter like Tatiana, who does not go to cover the war, but gives a real picture of politics on a live show is under a deadly attack. Too many details of that crime, meaning the stabbing, do not add up. For example, everything that the man had written about Tatiana in his internet blog had been edited professionally on the eve of the attack. So, um, yeah, and it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and uh, and other people uh, had pointed out that what she's saying about Putin was unacceptable and was Western propaganda. They accused her of uh, sending a message to her right before she was attacked. It's not that complicated. Look, guys, I, it, I have to confess that it drives me crazy when I see naivete uh, and about right wing dictators. And so I've seen this all across the world. And uh, you know, you see it in Russia, you see it in Turkey. Uh, Erdogan goes around intimidating the press. Then there's leaked audio of him yelling at the at the guys who own the media organizations in Turkey. Uh, and then people wonder, like, hmm, are they biased or not biased? What do you mean? We are, we all heard it. And and the guy was like crying on the phone, like, okay, I'm so sorry, I'll do what you want. You think Putin doesn't do that in Russia? <laughs> so look, I mean, we there's have- a there's a it, there's a tiny percentage chance that that she happened to get attacked by a, a, a lone madman, and 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 there's almost no chance that every reporter who's been critical of Putin. All got attacked by lone madmen, okay? And so I just say that because the people who, who are in denial over it are some are, are to me taking a, a little bit of credit away from this unreal brave journalist mm-hmm. who is standing up in the face of enormous power and enormous intimidation and with a with a throat that's slit up. And that's got a giant scar on it. She grabs the mic and, and the way she described it was, look, the, the answer is one thing. But I must ask this question about corruption and I must let Russia hear it. Because this is the one time in this live press conference, it goes on national television and it won't get censored by state television. So she laid out the whole case and how Putin's enemy opposition like Alexei Navalny faced one kind of justice, really harsh justice. And his de facto deputy Igor Sechin gets to evade justice nonstop, won't even show up to court when he's called to court. And she said, in that moment, whatever happened, I wasn't gonna let go of that mic. That's journalism, that's the press, that's courage. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying- You know, I'm like a smart person. So do it right now, tytnetwork.com slash join, get the whole Young Turks show every day.